So in this series of videos, we're asking three questions about mappings related to complex functions. The first one was what was the requirement for mapping to be one-to-one -one so that one point in the z-plane mapped to a single image point in the w-plane. The second question we want to look at is what makes a mapping conformal and what do we even mean by conformal? So we're going to talk about what it means to be conformal and we're going to determine a criteria for it to be conformal. Now the difference from our one-to-one -one analysis is going to be that there we were looking at individual image points. Here we're going to be evaluating entire curves. So what's the image of an entire curve? So let's take a curve C in the z-plane. So we have some curve, generic curve C in the z-plane. It has a point z0 somewhere on it and a point z0 plus dz an infinitesimal distance away. And then under our transformation f of z we have the image in the w-plane. And the image of our curve C is going to be this curve gamma. Likewise, z0 has an image point w0, and z0 plus dz is going to have an image point w0 plus dw. These angles are the angles to the tangent at the point z0 and at the point w0. So we want to see how these angles are related to each other under a conformal mapping. So we'd like to determine the behavior of the curve C and gamma in the vicinity of these image points Z0 and W0. And that's what the plus DZ and the plus DW are going to help us determine. So we have our original mapping, W is F of Z. If we differentiate that, that's DW is F prime of Z times DZ, just using the chain rule. Now if F prime of Z is not equal to zero, at some point z0, in other words it's not a critical point, then near that point z0 we know that dw is equal to f prime of z0 to z, just, just from here. Now let's take a look at the dw, the f prime of z0, and d0. Let's write them in polar form. So dz, well that's just the modulus of dz times e to the i theta. Again theta being the angle from the positive real axis to the tangent of our curve c. Then dw, same idea, dw is the modulus of dw times e to the i cap phi. And then f prime of z is the modulus of f prime of z at the point z0 times e to the i times the argument of f prime of z0. So what we're going to do is substitute each of these into this equation 2.6. So that's what this is right here. So it looks like a mess, but let's break this down. So this was the dw, this is the f prime of z, and this is the dz. Okay, so let's just collect things together on the right hand side. So we have the modulus of f prime of z zero times the modulus of dz, and then we have e to the i times the argument of f prime times e to the i theta. So that becomes e to the i times the quantity arg f prime plus theta. So now the modulus of dw is the modulus of f prime of z0 times the modulus of dz. That's this first relationship. And then capital theta has to be the same as arg of f prime of z0 plus theta 0. That's this second expression here. This is really the important one because of what it does is it shows how these angles are related. Remember the angle to c and the angle in the w plane to uh, capital gamma. All right, so the, the difference between them is the argument of the mapping, f prime of z. All right, so consequently what you see is that the mapping rotates by an angle arg of f prime of z0. All right, so we're going to take a look at what that means for us. So let's take this a step further. We looked at one curve and its image curve. Let's look now at two curves. So we have a curve C1 and a curve C2 in the z-plane, and the corresponding image curves in the w-plane, gamma 1 and gamma 2. The angles, theta 1 are to the tangent, theta 2 to the tangent, and capital theta are the angles to the tangents in the w-plane. All right, so just apply the result we had for one curve and its image to now two curves and their images. So for the first curve, capital theta 1 is the argument of f prime of z0 plus theta, plus theta 1 and capital theta 2 is the argument of f prime of z0 plus theta 2. Now notice 
z0 and its image point w0 is where these two curves intersect in their respective planes. These angles, of course, are the same. So if I simply subtract these two results, I get this amazing result. And that is, if f of z is analytic at a point, and f prime at z0 at that same point is not equal to 0, then the difference between the angles in the w plane is the same as the difference between the angles in the z plane. So that's what it means geometrically for a mapping to be conformal. So what that means is any two curves, the included angle between them, no matter what happens to these curves in the, with the mapping, the angles between the two curves at that intersection point stays the same, both in magnitude and in sense. So counterclockwise, clock, counterclockwise, clockwise, clockwise. So that's what it means for a mapping to be conformal. It's the sense of the angles between the two curves being the same. So again, one-to-one -one is a property of points and their image points. A mapping being conformal, that's a property of the angle between two curves. Now, the great thing here is you'll notice that the requirements for mapping to be one-to-one -one and for it to be conformal are precisely the same. So if a mapping is one-to-one, -one, it's conformal. If it's conformal, it's one-to-one. -one. cauchy run equations have to be satisfied. It has to be analytic. And f prime of zero has to be non-zero. So this is great. We couldn't have asked for a better result. We asked two questions, and the mathematical requirement for both is precisely the same.